I'm glad to be with you this morning, and we pray that the Lord will bless us as we worship together. Let us pray. Our most gracious God, we want to invite your presence right now as we come together to learn of your words. May your spirit speak to us, inspire us, and move our hearts. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayer. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, the title of my sermon this morning is entitled Living in God's Power. When you describe the word power, it is a kind of uh, a command, a kind of mandate being given to a particular person to excel or doing something in their life. But of course, if you see it in the, uh, in the political arena, you know, some people abuse their political power. Some, of course, they excel their power to the best they can to serve humankind. And of course, our, our mind at this moment as Christian, our power is given by our Lord Jesus Christ, not only just to serve mankind, but to serve our Lord, our God. And this is what we are about to study together, living in God's power. Now, when we live in the power of God, there is a change in our perspective, a change of our attitude in life, a change of how we do things, and a change in how we treat others, and also a change on how our relationship should be with our Lord, our Creator. Now, let me tell you my own story. I came from a Roman Catholic Church, a very staunch Roman Catholic family. My father was the church elder of the Roman Catholic Church. There were about 300 doors in my village back in Sarawak. My father studied at a Catholic school and he was asked by the priest to start a Christian church in my big village. When you talk about 300 doors, meaning that so many people living there, one home is called one door. And if a person about, of a family about 10 to 15 people, you imagine 300 doors means almost how many, you know, so many people living there, yeah. So my father started a big church. That church can be, uh, a, you know, now they have, they, separate, they separated that villages into different villages right now. But the place where I come from, just beside my house, there is a big Roman Catholic church. You know why it is built just next to my house? Because that land belonged to my family. When my father was the church elder, he donated that land to build a very big Roman Catholic church. So when they sing their songs on Sunday, then they preach the sermon from the pulpit, we can, we can clearly hear what they say in the church when they sing, just next to my house. Now, soon after many, many years, my brother and my whole family decided that there is something that we need to learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the power found in the Word of God, the Bible. So we learn about the Bible and we study the Bible by ourselves without any Adventist members coming to teach us. I was a Roman Catholic during that time and then I worked in, the, in a government school as a teacher. So I learned the Bible and whatever I knew during that time, I returned to my family and I began to share with them the word of God that I knew. And then many years after that, about three years, we decided to become a seven-day Adventist. 
Because we have found the truth found in the Bible. There is power found in the Bible. We found about the Sabbath truth. We found about healthy lifestyle of the Adventist people. And many other truths found in the Bible. And not about a few months after that, and then we were introduced by someone, uh, someone saying that there is nearby Seventh-day Adventist church. Why don't you go there and ask them further and ask the pastor to teach you more? And true enough, we went over there and they were so kind. They, they accept us as their friends and we said, we want to be baptized. Oh, the elder said, you need to study the Bible. Said, we, oh, we have studied the Bible ourselves already. We want the pastor to come and baptize us. And it's true enough. During that time, the, past, the president of Sarawak Mission was Pastor Chu Wee Fong. You know? he, he was the president of our, our mission at that time. He went over to my village and there were 15 of us baptized that day in the clear crystal flowing water just outside my house. And you know why? Who were the people who witnessed our baptism? No Seventh-day Adventist members, all Roman Catholic members. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That is to me the power that comes from the Lord. And with that, the president said to me, Pastor Francis, uh, Francis he said, you seem to be a potential person to be a pastor. What you do, pack your things. Within two weeks, I send you to SAUC Singapore to study. Well, let me tell you, it was a dream for me. I resigned from being a teacher in a government school. I packed my things only a small little bag I brought from Sarawak to study in Singapore to take theology. So now I am the minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church because of the power that comes from the Lord. Now, living in God's power, you know, there are many challenges that we all face in our life, including myself. Challenges that weaken our faith. Challenges that cool down our desire to serve God. The challenges that make us feel that we should not be around in church today. The challenges that make us feel that uh, I don't like a person in that church. There are so many things that affect our life. And when that challenge comes and strikes us, there is no power indeed. The power is weakened. The power has been taken away from us. And we don't feel like to be in church anymore. And this is where we need the power from the Lord that should be given to us so that we will continue to have the energy, to have the enthusiasm to serve the Lord and remain in church no matter what. Let me tell you, in church, there are many challenges too. We are not perfect people. All of us church members over here, including myself, we are not perfect person. We have a lot of weaknesses and challenges that I face and I believe you have faced in your life. But why do we need to come to church? You need that power from God. You need to be energized, letting the fire to keep on burning in your life. It's where you come and sing. To sing praises to the Lord. This way you learn Sabbath school lesson. And this way you sit down together to listen to the sermon. Why? Because you need that power. That power to move on in life and to serve the Lord God. Now, a car. We need a car. Yes, very hard to move in, in Singapore. Sometimes I'm in from Malaysia. I used to drive many years over there. And then when I come here, here it's like... Handicap, very difficult. Have to take MRT, to take bus or taxi. Very difficult sometimes. I in Malaysia, I just go to my car and just drive wherever I want, you know. But anyway, a car needs a good engine. You believe that? So that you can move. You start the engine and then the car moves to wherever you want to go. Yes, that car needs the power. The power that moves the car, the engine has the power to move the car. 
the engine that has power to bring you from one destination to another. And that's a good thing because there is power in that car. What if it doesn't work? This is where you see the picture over there. If the power is weakened, uh, there's, the engine doesn't run. Though, so normally we push the car, right? We push down the hill a little bit and you put Q1, you know, that, that, uh, that, uh, in the car so that when you push it, it the, uh, the car can start again and the engine will start and you move on. Yeah, you need to have that power in order that you can move the car. Now, to me in my life, a power comes when there is a joy in serving. A joy in serving. Serving people, not only just our church members, but serving people who are outside of our arena. Let me tell you this story, my encounter. This man is a beggar in Malaysia. For many years, this man lived underneath the bridge. When I go to work, when I was working at Penang Adventist Hospital, in underneath this bridge, this man sleep there with dirty clothes, oh, barefooted with the hair just like that. You see, like wire never been washed, or maybe years never took shower. He would just beg food from people, whatever people give. He just ate it. And at night, with you know, without blanket, with rain and shine, sleep underneath the bridge. This man. So one day, I decided. I told my wife, "You cook something special at home tonight. I'm going to visit this man to give him some food to eat and bring him some clothes to wear." So true enough, that evening, my wife cooked, and then I prepared the food in the container, and I went underneath this bridge. He was lying down, we see the picture there, lying down like that, and then uh, I tried to come near to him. At first he was trying to try to avoid me. And I, I went there slowly and then I began to touch his hand. But this man could not talk. Probably this man had been living there lonely without any human soul ever talk to him and he has forgotten human language. You believe that? And I went there, tried to talk to him, the only response he gave me was a smile with his white teeth. A smile. <laughs> and that's all. And I asked him, uh, this is some food for you to eat. And he, he didn't want to eat right away. He just put aside the food, the container of food, and I gave him some ang pao. It was over during Chinese New Year time, you know, I gave him a red packet and some money inside there, and then some oranges, you know, I tried to ask him. And then give, I gave him clothes. Uh, tonight you wear these clothes and this blanket if you feel very cold. And I believe, you know, a person like this, you know, their, their, skins, their skin are very thick, thick skin, you know, the mosquito will not, not by that, that uh, their skin anymore, you know, and his hair is just like wire like this, you know. Uh, so anyway, I was there to serve him that evening. I was there to serve him. I tried to talk to him that he, he could not respond much. And anyway, I, I pray in my heart. I said, I, Lord, um, bless this man. And then when I went there, you know, a few weeks ago, you know, we, I was there a few days ago actually, I saw this man underneath the bridge again. And this is my plan, that when I return to Malaysia again, I would like to make it a, a news so that the government will take care of him, take him out of that bridge, underneath the bridge, to bring him to a shelter where someone or the government will take care of him. But that is to me the power of serving. It, I, I would like to serve this man. And I would like to share whatever I have with this man. And this man had been abandoned for many years without friends, without probably food. And I believe a few years back before I met this man, my son was a small boy during that time. We went to visit an uh, Indian restaurant. 
And then, and I noticed this man went towards the restaurant asking for food from the restaurant owner. I watched from afar before I entered the restaurant. The, the boss, the owner of the restaurant took some rice mixed with vegetables and curry into the plate. And you know what I did? I thought he was about to give the food to this beggar, to this man. He brought this man, he hold his hand out of the restaurant, on the floor. He poured the food on the floor. You know that? Not the plate, the food on the floor and asked the man to eat it. And I went there and I said, the man, don't eat it. So I don't eat. I went inside, I bought a plate of rice. I brought him to sit in the restaurant. I paid for the food. And the restaurant owner was so embarrassed. He went inside the kitchen there without being seen because he was trying to serve the man by pouring the food on the, on the floor. But here is this man buying the food for that beggar. You know, desire to serve, desire to serve is so important for each one of us, not just thinking of who we are, but thinking of others who are in need. In it. Now, the power living in the power of the Lord is important for us to recognize. The power in prayer, praying for ourselves, praying for other people, praying for friends around us. The, we need that power to energize. I, I always encourage the young people, prayer is power. The more you pray, more power you have, less pray, less power. Never pray, no power. And that is important. It is important that we need to pray more to have that power. When that power of the Lord God is with us, that changes everything. Our attitude, our perspective, and the way of doing things changes. Now, the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 mentions about this. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. By the grace. What is grace? Grace is the mercy of God. We are not, we don't deserve it, but it is given. That is grace. The mercy of God upon us, given to us even though we don't deserve it. I believe, you know, the Lord, when we believe in Him, when we have faith with Him, the mercy of God will be bestowed upon us, will be given to us, that will energize us, that will give us the power. The power to sustain life, the power to keep faithful in the Lord God, and the power to serve mankind, and the power to serve, to give glory to the Lord our God. Reading the Word of God is also another way how we can gain power. Living in the power of God is reading and continuously reading the Word of God. Reading the Bible, regardless you have your hard copy Bible, you have soft copy, or the one that you have in your uh, smartphone, we need to read the Bible. Because that Bible can change who we are. That's what I mentioned to you just now. For months, my family and I, we were studying the Bible. And that Word of God changes our decision. Our decision was to be baptized into a seven-day Adventist church that uphold the truth in the Bible. And that became, became a seven. Uh, we become a seven Adventist. When you if you ever have an opportunity to visit my village, there is a big Seventh-day Adventist church now. Not next to the Roman Catholic Church, but away a little bit, about a 10 minutes walk from my house, we have a beautiful, as big as this, Seventh-day Adventist church. And then few other Roman Catholic Church, our relative, relatives and friends, are interested to know about the Lord God. And we believe that the power of God 
within our church, within the Bible itself that we know of, will influence, will draw people come into our church. And I believe it is not only just in my village, it, it does happen right here in this church. May this church be a shining light to people around. People see the people, loving people, caring people in this church. I come to church because there is warmness. There is uh, the people who cares about me. And I keep on coming to this church. The same thing. Right? When there is power in the Lord God. Now, Paul says here in Acts chapter 4 verse 33, And with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. See, when there is great grace, great mercy of God given to us, that will be given upon us, upon the apostles of here, you can see great wonders that can happen. The great grace given to the apostle was where people were being baptized. In one day, by thousands of people were converted, were being baptized into the church. And that is that great power. When we live in that power of the Lord God, that will initiate all our plans and our strategies that make it work. Sometimes our plans and our strategies, we do it on our own without the power of the Lord God. When the power of God is there, that's where we work smart. What? With the power of God. See, when we do witnessing the same thing also, we are trying our best to do it on our own effort and our energy and our capacity. That will not work. But when there is power of the Lord God within us, our capacity plus the power of the Lord God, that makes it work well. That is where we work smart when God is with us. The young people, the same thing in school also. You know, we study and you study, you, uh, you want, your aim is to excel well with flying colors that you want to get in your result. Yes, good, but don't forget that the Lord God is better if you plus. That becomes a plus, plus point for you when you study. Remember, you know, our mind works, uh, not that, you know, we cannot remember all things. Maybe 30%, but when we plus God there. 70%, it makes it better. Now, the Lord God entrusted his apostles, his disciples, that I will bless you in the name of God, that you will excel to go out to bring the good news of hope to people around us. And that's what? was the command being given to the apostle, to all of them, to do what was entrusted by their master, their savior. Indeed, they followed the instruction of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what happened? People flocking in, knowing, wanting to know the truth of God. And people were baptized into the church. Now, God's desire to show his power through us in, even in the challenges of our life. Don't think that when you face problems or challenges of, uh, in your life, God has left you. No, 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 no. When the storms of life happen in our life here, yeah, God promised to show his power to us. God will never leave us be knowing that when you are in that problems of life, He will intervene. He will come in to save us. Right? So when we want to experience the power of the Lord God, it is not only in a time of storm, but in terms of the time of good times. Oftentimes we remember God, when there's a bad time and a good time, we have forgotten God. Now, here it says, God's desire 
for us is to show His power even in times of our difficult times. Praise God for that. And He is willing to help us. He is willing to help us. Romans chapter 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Are you afraid or are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? And that is the good news. The good news is always to be proclaimed. The good news that I know, now it should not be kept in my heart, in my life. It has to be shared to other people. And that I should never be ashamed of that gospel. I should never be ashamed of the gospel. To tell people that I am a Seventh-day Adventist. I am a Christian. I believe in the Sabbath. Do, should we be ashamed of that? We should be proud that we are a Christian. Now, when that the power of the Lord God is within us. And that will initiate our feeling that will initiate our strategy on how we should witness for the Lord God in our life. Now, yeah, the, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is inside of you. you see, the power was in Jesus. He was, he was crucified and he was uh, buried and resurrected again. There is power in resurrection. And God says that power that was in Christ Jesus is in you. You see, how tremendous when there is power of the Lord Jesus Christ is in us. That can change who we are. Even the change, the change in our, our facial expression. Sometimes we see people walking around with a, 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 a gloomy look. You know, They don't have that uh, feelings of trying to make friends with other people. Uh, I am alone by myself. I feel happy by myself. I don't need other people. You know, let me tell you, when there is the power of the Lord God in us, you want to share. You want to share the good news to other people. Now, the Ephesians chapter 2, Paul also continues to say, by grace you are saved. This is, this is the point that we need to understand. The grace that God has given to us is the one that can save us. When the grace of God is inside me, I have that motivation and desire to do something. And the desire to be saved in the grace of God is not my effort, but it is the mercy of God given to me. And I believe and pray that all this will be, will be uh, imputed inside us, planted inside us, that we are saved by the grace of God. God is calling us, even in, in, the, in the difficult times of our life, and he says, I will be with you. Paul says again in chapter, Romans 3, verse 23, all of us have seen and come short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. And of course, some people are trying to preach perfection. Um, perfection. That you need to be perfect first on earth in order that you can be in heaven. You know, there are some people teach about that. But, uh, you know, let me tell you, all of us have seen in my imperfection, it is in the Lord God Jesus Christ that make it possible for me to be saved in the kingdom of God. It is not my, my effort to be there, but it is the effort of God. When mine and God plan works together, that I will be in heaven. All of us have seen. I have a brother-in-law. He's a very old man, more than 100 years right now. The story is a little bit long. My, my brother-in-law is, is older than my father and my mother. <laughs> I will not tell you why. You know, but he's still alive now. My father passed away. He is still alive. 
strong right now. And he said this when we became Seventh-day Adventists. He said, no, 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 I will not follow all of you to become Seventh-day Adventists because I was a communist man before and I killed many people. And I went to people's farm and steal. I went to shoot many people, the policemen, the army, I shoot them because I was a communist man. And I believe God will never forgive me. No, 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 no. I've killed many people. I will not. You know what? We were trying to tell him, but he was not able to be convinced at first. But later on, after a few years, he was being persuaded by the Holy Spirit, speaking right into his heart that even though how red, just like the Bible book, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, red like crimson, if you come near to God, it will be as white as snow. That was the text we shared to him. Even though you have sinned, you have killed someone, if you come to the Lord, how red it might be like crimson, but if you come to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sin shall be forgiven. It will be as white as snow. And soon after that, now he is a seven-day Adventist. He was baptized into the church, but he still remained with us now, he's very old. He's not able, able to hear well. He cannot even walk properly right now. But I do not know. The age is about 100, 110, right? his age. Very old man now. Still living with my, my elder sister. Married to my elder sister. Now, when we have these burdens of life, what would be the best strategy? The strategy is to carry that burden. Yeah? You carry that burden to the feet of the cross. And you throw that burden of sin on the feet of the cross. And after that, you can see in this picture, freedom shall be yours. We are freed when we come to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we need to ask for forgiveness? I was a Roman Catholic before this was a picture. When you as a member of the Roman Catholic Church, the priest will come to your village once a year. When, what did he do? He, did, he will conduct masses and he would conduct forgiveness of sins. This is the, the place, a small little room. He would sit over there and every church members would come in and talk to the priest, telling the priest what you have done, your sins that you have committed in life. You have cheated someone, you have lied, with, um, lied telling lies to people, you have stolen somebody's chicken or whatever, you just tell everything. And the priest would say, uh, Francis, your sin is forgiven now. Go back to your seats and pray ten times to Virgin Mary. And after that, you are freed. This is what the priest tells us. So we practice that every time when the priest came to our church. We were very excited. Now I want to be freed from my burden of sin. So that's what I did. I came to church to see the priest like this. And the priest has the power to forgive sins. And that's why you study it in the church history of the Roman Catholic Church. Jesus gave the key for, to the priest to unlock heaven's door. He has the key. If you want to enter heaven, go through the priest. Pray to the priest and he will forgive you. But how about us as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian and many other Christians? We don't do that, right? We come direct to the Lord Jesus Christ. He forgives. When He forgives, there is power in us. We become an alive person from the situation of death to a living, alive person. This is how the Lord changes us when we have that power. Now, the power that comes from the Lord, of course, we have to recognize it. It is found in the Bible itself. That we need to continuously reading the Word of God. And it says here, where? 
I think if you to live is to die. To have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ even in order to live, you need to die first. Die of self. Because this self is the one that destroy my life. This selfishness, this deceitfulness that I have in my life that kills me. In order that to live again, this self must die first in order to live in the Lord God, Jesus Christ. And each and every one of us here, we should die in ourselves here so that we will live again with the Lord God. Now, Hebrew 4, chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And because of that, this is a call for every one of us, including myself, to come to the Lord Jesus, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time, help in times of need. When there is a need in our, our life, either spiritual life, emotional life, social life, mental life, problems, we come to the Lord because the Lord he will bless us. The Bible mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 about Noah. Noah found grace in God. People were, um, the people who live in this world during that time were wicked, but Noah and his family found grace, the mercy of God that protected his family and they were safe in the ark during that time. So, may the Lord Continue to bless us. John 14 verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. And this is when we keep the commandments of the Lord, we are living in the power of God. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The strength of God is perfect in our weakness. Let us have this living power of the Lord to serve to serve people who are in need of us. Thank you. May God bless us all.